So here are some information about the larval growth of Mecrinorina polyphemus. It's one of the uh, beetles that uh, I think should be used for uh, future projects of uh, cultivating edible insects in a substrate um, and with uh, food with feed that is not uh, one, one of the main food sources uh, for humans. So that's why I'm uh, trying to produce uh, edible insects with all that kind of material that is not used by humans as uh, food, especially all the uh, litter and debris from, uh, from plants and from, from wood. So let's see how we could reorganize and innovate the composting process uh, with insects so that we can produce uh, food, high quality food for human beings while composting plant material, wood based plant material. So what you see here, this is the effect of the larval uh, feeding on a substrate that originally consisted of pieces of wood like this one, of leaves like the things in, in this material here that I have prepared uh, for the larvae um, that I found here to, to go on with feeding. And as you can see, it's finely, the material is ultra finely ground, it's a soft texture and it looks and smells like normal uh, good garden uh, soil. That, and what you can see here probably also some spots you see some holes in the substrate, they come from deep down in the substrate where the larvae are. I don't know if, whether they are still in here in this box or, or already have pupated. But what I can tell you about another box, the same size, 65 liter box filled with flake soil and leaves. I put in 30 to 40 L1 to L2 larvae um, 25th of February. And after around eight months now, I checked the box and I found 32 L3 larvae between 25 and 30 grams each and three uh, pupas. That means 35 uh, larvae survived in that substrate, lived in there for eight months and are now on the way to transformation uh, to pupas. I took them out of the substrate put them in this little 500 milliliter boxes just to check the process of, uh, of patients. And the material that they left behind was kind of this stuff, perfect garden uh, soil. So that's an interesting thing. You can leave them eight months without giving food, without giving water, only slight small holes in a box you just forget them and they do the whole process of transforming the plant material into a rich soil without any work that you have to do. Uh, you don't have to turn the thing over and uh, that's what they do themselves. And um, while composting you can produce a rich edible insect food for humans. That's one of the projects we are working on now at the University of Applied Sciences in Zurich in Wettenswil. It's called Food from Wood. So, but now I want to show you something more here, where we find some... This is also a box where the, where the larvae were in for about eight months now. And it's not, it's not, it's not in a very warm room that I kept them. So, uh, the room was between, I would say, 20 and 22 uh, degrees, but I can see that there are a lot of larvae down in the on in the bottom of the box, and you can see the material here. This is nice, pure, finely ground earth because they have strong mandibles to chew up all the, all the wood things. Um, they multiply the surface of the material for this fermentation process, where microorganisms can uh, fix nitrogen that is resorbed in the digestive tract of the of the insect. So, look, this fine material, perfect garden soil that you can just use for growing your vegetables in the garden. And down here in the box, on the bottom, so sometimes I have to be a little bit careful because could be that in this kind of 
block is already a pupa, like here for example, that's a pupal chamber. So I don't um, break them open because now here the pupa is already in, the, in this um, little box. And I will try to show you here where it is here. It is, it is not too big one, but it's typical. A typical purple cell of Polyphemus confluence. So I, I, I don't go here with too much power. Sometimes you can turn these things over and you feel that there is a pupa inside of a... This could be a purple chamber too. So I have to be careful now here because there seem to be more a lot was already pupated here than in the other box. In the other box I only found uh, three pupas. Could be that I find here some more of them. But uh, happily the pupal chambers of of uh, rose chambers, they are constructed quite uh, quite well. So they normally they don't break apart when you touch them. Uh, compared to dynasties, Laurie that built Pupal chambers that are very fragile every time you this could be also one yes and now we have already three pupas and this could be also something like that sometimes you feel that it it's a hard material here like it is that this it's a hard material here now voila this is another one and so you can find now already after eight months you can find the purple chambers and they are made in the middle of the substrate where the other uh, larvae still live and of course now I will try to take this material away here so that I can dig down for the other larvae to see how they have grown and what sucks they have. Oh yeah, I see a lot of them here. All this big fat lorry of Mechunorina polyphemus. And of course for this lorry, this seems a bit uh, pumped up. This is normal just before the process of pupation. It's 31 grams. So I just put it into this kind of a 500 milliliter box with leaves and whatever they like to eat also and also this one they just go into these boxes for the further process to watch and see the process of pupation because you can see that from outside very well here in these boxes and then we go on looking for pupas in the substrate and every larva that we find we just put it into a small box. Now here we have to be careful not to crush one of the purple chambers if we find one. So very well here the more more big fat larvae here. Yes, this one is also 30 grams. So they seem to like it. Also if they are really crowded like this in a small box they grow so well and they go grow so big 33 grams is this one it's nice to see that and if you want to convert plant material into rich soil why not do it with insects instead of just throwing it on a pile outside and let the worms do the job and you don't eat the worms this kind of insects are eaten in Africa Traditionally, as a rich protein source, but of course some of these uh, ideas of uh, entomophagy, they have been lost during the process of uh, coming in contact with the Western civilization, because Westerners, they think that insects are not good for food. And... Um, that message they brought also to people who traditionally have eaten um, insects and had a big benefit 
from that because insect proteins they are uh, rich in trace elements and of course uh, it's easier to produce them and collect them as the big uh, animals that you have to hunt so they just fly at the door of your house and you can pick them up or like with crickets you just go out in the field and then you and you collect them there so what we have here a more fat always here so very nice we have the next portion and then we come to the bottom of the substrate normally that is really crowded with uh, with uh, larva so let's see what happened here first but first I have to put away this first material so and now we just turn over the box and let's see what we find on the bottom of it Well, you see a lot of them here and all of them are very big and fat and ready for pupation 31 grams they are now on their way to pupation so that's why they are, they are so big and nice and well, this is 32 grams so also these ones they are between 25 and 30 or more grams and as I can count now already there are a lot of them around the amount of young larvae that I put in there eight months ago so they they didn't die here in you know contrary they they have grown very well to a normal size they didn't suffer any any lack of food or water or whatever but I think that the substrate is probably a bit too wet now and it's good to take them out and bring them into a substrate that is slightly drier because normally in the dry season they pupate and in the wet season they eat and so that's good for them to change the humidity of the substrate for the pupation uh, process so you see that a lot are still working and working and there's still more coming up here also oh, every everywhere there they are look here <laughs> everywhere you find them but you probably have recognized that the, the pupil chambers they were on the upper in the upper part of the box so it was a little bit drier and the, the larvae that still if they are down in the substrate where it's slightly wet and uh, where they grow well I think that they will be pupas in around one or two months that's why I take them out now and yeah it's interesting to see try four six eight ten twelve it's around thirty um, of this really big 28 gram 26 32 so they are around 30 grams each and that means that in one of these boxes uh, in 8 months from just a little bit of wood and leaves they become 1 kilogram of this uh, insect of this big insect lorus so keep on watching probably under the under the name of food from wood you will find some more information in the internet if you happen to see this video just go there and have a look about our pro uh, our project thanks for watching